Hey guys, welcome back to Econ Class. Today we are dealing with consumer choice and utility maximization. Now, this is a type of question that commonly shows up on the FRQ portion of the AP Micro exam. I would say maybe one in four years has it, but it's something that has been a little more common in the past few. So objectives for today, identify key assumptions of consumer choice, which we'll be talking about next, calculate the marginal utility per dollar spent, a very important concept, identify if utility maximization has been achieved, and then finally explain why utility maximization has been achieved. So these are what we're going to get through. Let's go to the assumptions, okay? Now there are, is a lot here. Basically what we're doing is we're trying to help somebody allocate their money to make purchases between two items to maximize their utility. That's the goal of these types of questions. So some assumptions we are going to make. Consumers face budget constraints. They only have so much money. Consumers face diminishing marginal utility. Now, if you don't know what diminishing marginal utility is, go check out my previous video, Marginal Analysis, and it'll help explain it a little more in depth. These consumers will exhaust their entire budget. They're going to spend every cent that they have on these two different consumer goods. And then they're going to allocate purchasing power to maximize their utility. They are going to maximize their satisfaction to the fullest extent that they can. So, and this is going to be achieved when the marginal utility per dollar spent is equal for both goods on the last purchase of each good. All right, that, that equation down on the bottom there, that's what we're trying to achieve, where the marginal utility of good X divided by the price of good X equals the marginal utility of good Y divided by the price of good Y. All right, so what is the marginal utility per dollar spent? What is this concept? All right, so it's written like this, marginal utility of X divided by price of X gives us the marginal utility per dollar spent. But what does that actually mean? Back to the last class, we talked about the peanut butter, the satisfaction I got from it. Let's just say that buying that jar of peanut butter cost me $5. That peanut butter, that jar gave me 100 utils total in satisfaction. So my marginal cost for that additional can jar of peanut butter was $5. My marginal benefit was 100 utils. But what is the per dollar marginal utility of that jar of peanut butter? So what we got to do is take that 100 utils, then we divide it by the $5 that I spent on it, so we get 20 utils per dollar. That's what a per dollar marginal utility is. All right, let's move on to an example. Okay, so here's the deal. I'm going to give my kid 10 bucks. I'm going to let him go to the store. He's going to buy what he wants. Right now he's going to take this $10, and he's going to spend it on some Halloween themed soda and candy. All right. So he's going to be going after the mystery flavored Mountain Dew and the zombie Skittles. The mystery flavored Mountain Dew costs about $2 each. The Skittles about a dollar. Now, how can he maximize that? We're already given the information of his marginal utility. We can see clearly that the first five Mountain Dews that he buys, the marginal utility is going to diminish. When we go down to the Skittles, same thing. The fifth one is not going to give them any satisfaction. So we already got that built in. What we need to figure out now is the per dollar marginal utility. For the Mountain Dew, he's paying two bucks a, a bottle for it. So we're going to take that marginal utility he gets from each bottle and divide that by two. So the first bottle gives him 12 units of satisfaction, but per dollar, it's only giving him six. So the second bottle is only going to get him five per dollar. Four for the third, three for the fourth, and the last one only gives him two units of satisfaction. It's only going to give him one per dollar in that case because he's spending two dollars per Mountain Dew. So we got that one figured out. Now the Skittles are only one dollar a piece. Now it's the marginal utility divided by the price of the item. So we're dividing just by one dollar. So that four units of satisfaction still stays four per dollar because it's only a dollar a package. So three, two, one, and zero. So now we know what his per dollar marginal utility is for each item, and now we can start making decisions. So looking at it, we can see that the highest per dollar satisfaction is up at the top with the Mountain Dew. So let's go grab one of those. He's at the store, he's buying one of those. He's thinking, I'm gonna get more out of this one than anything else. 
Now the second item that he's going to buy is also going to be a Mountain Dew because it's five units of satisfaction per dollar. Remember, it's per dollar spent that we're worried about in these situations. Now the third item, he could go either way. Mountain Dew is going to get him four per dollar and the Skittles are going to get him four per dollar. So we'll grab another Mountain Dew while we're here. Now, he's got to make a choice. Should he get another Mountain Dew at three units per dollar? Or should he go down and grab a bag of Skittles? Well, he's going to make sure he grabs him Skittles because it's worth four per dollar. So it's definitely going to provide him more satisfaction per dollar than that Mountain Dew at the time. So now he's got, he spent seven dollars. He's got three bucks left. He'll grab another bag of Skittles because it's the same per dollar with the Mountain Dew. And he's still got two dollars left over. He's going to go up and buy that last Mountain Dew because buying another bag of Skittles would not give him that amount of satisfaction. So in this case, is he happy? He looks happy. Why? Okay, first off, remember some of the assumptions we make. Did he exhaust his budget? Yes, he spent all $10. He's got all the satisfaction he can get out of that $10. Did he follow the rule of the marginal utility per um, dollar spent of Mountain Dew equal the marginal utility per dollar spent for the Skittles? Did he, was the last item equal in that aspect? Yes, it was. The, the last Mountain Dew that he purchased was, provided him six units of, mar, of utility. Divide that by two ends up being three. The last package of Skittles he bought gave him three units of satisfaction. Divided by one ends up being three. So this does hold true. So he did maximize his satisfaction. He exhausted his budget and th four units of Mountain Dew and two units of Skittles would be the optimal allocation of goods. All right, guys, let's take a little time to do a little consumer choice practice here. Now you can find this worksheet, a link to it in the description below, so feel free to do that. All right, John acquires utility from consuming good Y and good X. Okay, very generic example here. John's weekly disposable income is $23. The price of good Y is five and the price of good X is four. Use the data available to complete the table below and answer the following questions. Now on a true FRQ, they're gonna give you the data. They're not gonna give you the nice blank columns and everything, you kinda of gotta create your own on the AP version of this exam. But you can always create your columns. That's why I set it up the way I did, just to get you used to creating those. So let's start with the first question. What is the per dollar marginal utility of John's third purchase of good Y? All right, so let's fill this chart out first. I wanna take some time to do that before we get into the specific questions, all right? So we know that good Y is $5, all right? That means that to get the per um, dollar marginal utility, we're gonna have to divide each of the marginal utilities by five. That'll give us seven, 35 divided by five, 30 divided by five is gonna give us six, five, four, three, two, and we are good. Now, to get the good X, we're gonna have to divide by four because each unit of good X is $4. So 24 divided by four is gonna be six. 20 divided by four is five, four, three, two, and one. All right, so once you have your table filled, then we can start answering these questions. The first one, what is the per dollar marginal utility of John's third purchase of good Y? So we look up to the table, the third purchase of good Y, the per dollar marginal utility is going to be five. All right, what is the per dollar marginal utility of John's second purchase of good X? So we gotta jump over to the other column, we look there, second good, Marginal utility is 20, but the per dollar marginal utility is going to be five as well. So both of these answers are gonna be five. Now the difficult one. Answer, or question C. What quantity of good Y and X will maximize John's utility if he spends all of his disposable income? Explain your answer using marginal analysis. So getting the answer is one thing and then explaining it the right way is another. And that becomes a little bit of a difficult task, but the wording isn't too bad once you remember it. All right, so let's get to this point. He has $23. We know he's gonna use all of it. We know that each unit of good Y is gonna cost him five, each unit of good X is gonna cost him four. We have the per dollar uh, marginal utility already established. Now we just gotta pick and choose, all right? So our first unit that we are gonna purchase is gonna be a unit of good Y, all right? It provides us seven units of, of satisfaction per dollar spent, definitely the best option. All right, we've spent $5. The second thing that we are gonna buy could either be a unit of Y or a unit of X. They both are the same, six uh, units per dollar spent. So we'll take another unit of X, we spent another or unit Y, 
um, we're gonna spend another $5. Now we're gonna jump over, the next thing we're gonna pick is a unit of X, six per dollar spent, so we're gonna take that one. Now once again, we're in a point of indifference, it doesn't matter if I buy X or Y, I'll grab another X. So at this point, I've spent $18. All right, I've got two units of Y, I got two units of X. So looking at the next one, I can either get a unit of X at four units per dollar, or I can get a unit of Y at five units per dollar. I'm gonna grab that last unit of five right there, or of Y right there, and I've spent my $23. All right, I'm totally tapped out. Um, I've maximized my satisfaction. All right, with three units of Y and two units of X. All right, now explaining it is a little different. So we'll throw the answer out there. Three units of good Y, two units of good X. However, we have to explain it. The best answer, a uh, couple key words that I'll point out. With this allocation, we have exhausted all income. That's important to kind of say, we've used up all the income, it's one of the requirements, and the margin utility of the last unit purchased of good Y is equal to the marginal utility of the last unit purchased of good X, or the per dollar marginal utility of the last unit purchased of good X. Or you can just simply put that equation out there. Marginal utility of Y divided by the price of Y equals the marginal utility of X divided by the price of X. That would be an acceptable answer too, just putting that. Having three units of good Y, two units of good X, and then saying because that equation will work. All right, let's move on to the next part. Part D says, let's assume that John's disposable income doubles and the price of good Y and X double as well. How will this affect how John allocates his income and how will the optimal quantity of goods under these circumstances change? What's gonna to happen to him? So the easy answer here is nothing's gonna to happen to the allocation, all right? A good rule to follow when the income and the prices of both goods change by the same proportion, it means that your allocation isn't gonna change at all. The per dollar uh, marginal utility is gonna change, the actual income that you have is gonna change, or the, the budget that you have is gonna change, but nothing else is gonna change. And I'm just gonna go over this quickly to explain it. So instead of 23, we've got 46, our income doubles. The prices of good X and good Y are gonna double as well. We go from five to 10 and four to eight. So we're gonna divide by 10 in this instead of five now. So 3.53, 2.52, 1.5, and one. And we're gonna do the same thing with the good X. Instead of dividing by four, we're now dividing by eight. So we get this, um, a different per dollar marginal utility as well. So now looking at this, we are gonna do the same thing, except for each item that we spend, we're spending twice as much. So our first unit is going towards uh, good Y. Our second unit's gonna to go towards Y as well. Our third one, because it's three units per dollar spent, is gonna to go towards X. Then we're gonna stick with X one more time because it's 2.5, same as Y. And then we are gonna go with back to Y at a 2.5. We're just picking which one. Remember, it's like walking into a store and identifying what's gonna give you the most satisfaction per dollar spent. That's all we've done here. So once again, we're going with three units of Y and two units of X. The allocation will not change. The optimal quantity will remain three units of good Y and two units of good X. All right, so just keep that in mind. When income and prices change by the same amount, it's going to stay exactly the same. Last question. Assume John instead consumes two units of good Y and three units of good X. Explain why John is not maximizing his utility using marginal analysis. So he's consuming two units of good Y and three of X. It's just changed what it was. Um, so $23 is our starting point. We consume one Y at $5. We consume a second Y at $5. We've spent 10. Now we're gonna go do our three X's, all right? In this case, we haven't even spent the $23. We've only spent 22. And we definitely haven't maximized our satisfaction because I could have grabbed that third unit of Y and gotten five units of satisfaction per dollar spent instead of that third unit of X where I only got four. So I made a bad choice here. So let's see how we explain it. John no longer exhausts his income and the margin utility of Y divided by the price of Y does not equal the margin utility of X divided by the price of X for each of the last units purchased. 
Okay, so they don't equal each other. That is an acceptable answer when it comes to explaining why it's not the most optimal allocation of his resources. All right, that covers it for that practice question. If you have any other questions, please let me know. And please take a look at these FRQ practices here. These are specifically catered towards that consumer choice kind of concept. Um, these don't show up every year, but I would say every other year, maybe a little bit more. These are definitely a possibility this year showing up on the exam. So thanks for watching, guys. Take care and see you next time.